Hey guys, and welcome back to another Shadow Priest uh, analysis video. Um, today I'm going to look at this Mists of Tyranus Scythe 19 that was sent in to me by Paul from my, my Discord server. Um, so thank you, Paul, for sending this in. Paul basically just asked if I could take a look and see how he could bring this overall DPS number up. His goal is to time all the dungeons at level 20. Um, and he just timed this mists at level 19, so he's pretty close, it sounds like. So he's just looking for the, the little things that he can do that can make timing them at 20 easier, right? Um, and he feels like his overall DPS is uh, one of the contributing factors to him not being able to, to time these higher keys, right? And he's, he's correct, for sure. His DPS is low. Um, so he's, he was asking for ways to bring this up. So I'm going to take a look at it. Hopefully you guys get some uh, valuable information out of this. And things that apply to this guy can apply to your gameplay as well. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And uh, let's just get right into it. So first thing that I want to do, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at this log. Because I, I don't really like looking at dungeon logs. Um, I'd rather watch a video. And Paul recorded this, so uh, we will watch the video. Um, but there are a couple important things that I do want to look at in the log first. If we click on the priest, we click on summary. This will bring up the character page. And there's some important stuff that you can see on this character page um, that would be really hard to see in this video. So uh, first things first, um, talents. This is a tyrannical bolstering storming week, uh, and prideful, of course, because we're still in season one. Um, so as far as talents go, uh, you're running Death and Madness, Searing Nightmare, Shadow Crash, and Hungering Void. Those are the, the ones that might change depending on what dungeon you're doing. Death and Madness is pretty much taken in every single key, but I think there are some really edge cases where Fortress of the Mind might be better, but uh, for pretty much every case, Death and Madness is the safe choice. Um, and then the, the two big ones that a lot of people might disagree with here are Searing Nightmare and Shadow Crash. In Mists of Tyranus Scythe, there's this new wave of people who are uh, running Misery and Auspicious Spirits instead. And I, I don't think that's such a bad idea, because there are several mobs, like the, the Mistvale Stalkers, the Shapers, uh, those bugs that fly around and give you the nature debuff later on in the dungeon. There's a bunch of mobs that jump out and then run back in, right? And anytime you have mobs that jump out and then are away from other mobs and then come back, Searing Nightmare gets a little worse, right? Because if you're trying to Searing Nightmare a pack and mobs are jumping out of it, you're not going to be hitting them with your Searing Nightmare casts. So I think that's the reasoning behind playing Misery in Mists, is that you can just dot everything and then it doesn't matter where it goes, right? It doesn't have to stay stacked, you're still doing damage to it. So uh, I I still play Searing Nightmare and Shadow Crash in Mists. Um, I just did a 20 Mists yesterday, and uh, we did I did 7.6k overall DPS. So I don't think that Searing Nightmare and Shadow Crash are necessarily bad, right? I think you can still do good damage with them. Um, but maybe look into running Misery and Auspicious Spirits instead. If you feel like you're having a hard time uh, landing a bunch of Searing Nightmares on, on packs, especially those packs where things are jumping out, right? Um, but yeah, so I would run, I, I think Searing Nightmare and Shadow Crash are fine. And then the other one, uh, Hungering Void, I think this is a good choice specifically because it's tyrannical. Um, Hungering Void is just going to mean that your, your Void Forms end up going longer. Uh, which means you're going to do more boss damage and more prideful damage if you're popping void form there and and all of that. So, uh, good good talent choices. There are other options that you might want to consider, but this is fine. And then as far as conduits and soulbinds go, um, you're playing Naya, which I think is also a, a fine choice. Um, some people will play Karain in in dungeons, but uh, I think especially if you're you're trying to do more single target damage, like boss damage, because it's tyrannical, high tyrannical key. Uh, Naya is definitely the better choice. Um, 
on like a really high fortified key where you want to do a lot of trash damage, Brain is probably the better choice, but uh, in this situation, Naya is, is a, a fine choice, probably the, the correct choice. So, um, And then these four traits are correct. And then these four, um, the, the only ones that matter here, like a lot, are Dissonant Echoes and Haunting app Apparitions. Got both of those, so that's good. Translucent Image, I push for this big time um, because it gives you a really strong defensive in Fade. Uh, so it's it's good that you're running this, and then this uh, conduit doesn't matter pretty much at all in this situation. You're like never gonna cast Leap of Faith, so you could have a different conduit here. But we don't really have any conduits here that are you're gonna get a lot of value out of in this dungeon. So it, it honestly doesn't matter. This is fine. As far as uh, the initial stuff you did pre dungeon, at least this portion of your character sheet looks fine. Um, there is one thing that I want to mention about these conduits, but it also ties into your gear, so I'm going to go through your gear real quick uh, before I mention that. So your gear is looking really good. You've got your enchants, you've got Celestial Guidance, which is good for keys, Shadow Core Oil. You're using your, uh, your reinforced uh, armor kit, which is good. You've even got Cardboard Assassin for the engineering belt which is super good. Um, a lot of people, if you want to go really, really high, Cardboard Assassin becomes very, very valuable. So uh, this is this is not bad. Um, Soul Treads even, which is the enchant for reduced falling damage. This is a, uh, it's good. It's like, you're not going to use any of the agility enchants, so you may as well put Soul Treads on your boots. But a lot of people just won't enchant their boots because they're not getting any DPS benefit from it. But this, this passively makes you a little bit tankier, albeit uh, you're not going to be taking fall damage very often. But when you do, you've got Soul Treads for it. Anyway, so uh, you've got Shadow Flame Prism on your hands, which is fine. Um, and I think in 9.1, that might be the correct choice. Um, most people have it on their head right now. I have it on my head slot. Um, but there's a, a really good head in the new raid that's coming out. So we might end up wanting to craft it on our hands. For anybody who hasn't crafted their legendary or uh, is considering crafting it on your hands now that I've said that, um, take my advice with a grain of salt because all of the 9.1 stuff, especially when it comes to Shadow Priest legendaries, is really, really, really finicky. Pretty much... Uh, the Warcraft Priests team that does all of the sims and everything that kind of guides the meta for Shadow Priests, they, they're they going to do a big testing this weekend to see uh, how the Covenant legendaries are looking. And so as of making this video, there is no solid answer for what the best legendary is going to be in 9.1. Um, so if you haven't crafted your, your Shadow Flame Prism yet, or you... So if you haven't crafted it yet, Feel free to craft it. It's the best right now by far. Um, so you can either put it on your hands or your head. Doesn't matter. Um, but if you already have one on your headpiece, don't go make it for your hands yet. Just because I said there's a good headpiece in the new raid. Um, because we're not sure if Shadow Flame Prism is even going to be the best legendary. So if you go and you spend Soul Ash to create a new legendary for your hands, and then it turns out that maybe the Night Fae legendary is better um, which it's almost certainly not going to be but uh, if it turns out that a different legendary is better then you've wasted a bunch of, of soul ash making this legendary um, so so if you have it on your head uh, keep it and don't don't make it on your hands yet once 9.1 gets closer I'll probably put out a video that talks about uh, some of the stuff like what you should be looking to how you should be looking to gear your character in 9.1 Specifically, like what trinkets you should be going for, what legendary, um, that kind of thing. So keep an eye out for that. But as of right now, it's just too tumultuous. Nobody really knows. Um, okay, now this this is the point where I want to bring up uh, Venari. So if you look at your character sheet, you'll notice that your your two really big conduits, your potency conduits, are 213 and 200 eye level respectively 
these could be 226, and to get them to 226 is not super difficult. All it takes is uh, you need to get your Venari rep to Exalted in the Maw. For anyone who doesn't know, there's a, a, a reputation that you can get in the Maw, this person called Venari, and once you get your reputation high enough, you can buy conduit upgrades. It'll upgrade a random conduit every... It's like 1900 Stygia. It'll upgrade a random conduit from among your lowest conduits. Uh, basically what I'm saying is do the Ma. Because if you do the Ma every day, it's not super hard. It takes me about 45 minutes a day. And you can make these numbers, instead of being 200 and 213s, they can all be 226s. And that's just going to passively increase your damage. And this ties into your gear as well because you'll notice you don't have a single socket on your gear. Um, and one socket, depending on uh, how your your stat weights and everything are, one socket, for me at least, is about a 30 DPS upgrade. So you could have six sockets right here without any luck. So if you do the do the maw, you buy your sockets, you can put it on six different pieces of your gear, and you could have significantly more uh, haste or more mastery or whatever you put, whatever gems you put in there, and it would just immediately make you stronger, right? So that's one big thing I want to push here. Do the maw. It's worth it. Um, even going into 9.1, when there's going to be new... Uh, when Corthia comes out and there's going to be a new currency to buy sockets and everything, I think it's still worth it at this point to try and get sockets on your current gear because it's going to make 9.1 easier up until you get way better gear, right? And the way and way better is in quotes because uh, some of this gear that you have right now might still be super good. Like this Soul Letting Ruby, that's going to be really good probably for a long time in 9.1. Um, so you should be you should do the maw. Do the maw, get Stygia, boost these to two twenty six, get six different gems, you'll be chilling. Okay, so that's all I want to look at as far as the, the log goes. Um the other thing we can see you die three times. Uh don't do that. <laughs> okay, let's let's go ahead and watch the video now. So I'm gonna have it muted because uh when he recorded this, he was watching a stream or something, it sounds like. I don't want to you know, um, get anybody else's audio in, in this video or whatever. So, um, And there's no point having it unmuted anyway, because they're, they're not in Discord or anything as far as I can tell. So we'll just watch it uh, muted. Okay, so the key starts up. You guys are mounted. You go open the thing. And then you're going to go into this very first spike claw pull. Um, I guess before we start going, one thing I want to mention is your UI is really good, actually. I really like it. All of the info that you need to know is pretty uh, clear. It's, you don't have to like go looking for it or anything. For instance, your weak aura suite is right here in the middle. I like that. Your debuffs are over here, and they're really big, which is nice because... You can tell what you're debuffed by. These things that are attached to the enemy nameplates are magic benefits, beneficial magic effects on enemies that can be dispelled. That's super nice. It's good to be able to see that and know that you can dispel those. Um, you have your party frames down here right below your health, which is actually a really good spot for it, I think, um, because then it clears up this whole section of your screen so you can see stuff uh, that's like coming towards you or whatever. Um, yeah, so all in all, I think this is this is really, really good. Uh, there's like pretty much nothing that I would change about this, so good job. Um, actually, there's, there's one thing that I might change, and that's you've got yourself in your party frames, but you've also got your health up here. So you're showing the same information twice, um, and you, there's, there's no point in my opinion. If you ever want to target yourself, right, you could either click here or you could click here. Um, and you're almost always just going to click here, right? So I would say uh, take yourself out of your party frames. Plus, you don't need to know like these two cooldowns right here. It's showing your, your power fusion and your void form, your void eruption. You have that already right here. 
So all of this info down here is redundant, right? Um, so I would I would get rid of that. It would open up just a little bit more room, and but that's a very minor thing. So okay, back to the key. So you guys are gonna do this spike claw pull, and things go really badly here actually. So let's watch. First off, you guys are all stacked, which is not good because these spike claw guys do that little jump that puts a, a bleed on people. Plus, it's storming, so being stacked is going to be really bad because you're all going to get hit by tornadoes. And yeah, so if you look right now, you've got two stacks of this bleed. Your healer has three. Everybody, in, actually, you've got three. And then the other three people in your group have two, and the healer has three as well. All of you guys are taking a ton of damage from this thing right here, this bleed, that you could not be taking, right? Um, so the idea. I think the intention behind stacking here is that these guys jump away. So if we stack, they're not going to jump out and we can do cleave damage to them, right? Which in theory is good. The only problem is when they jump, they cleave everything they hit. So if they jump on one person, all five of you are going to get the bleed, right? So it's just what you want to do in this case is be close, right? So that they don't jump very far away so you can still cleave. But you want to be spread enough that if a spike claw jumps to you, it's not going to cleave anybody else. And you're far enough away from everybody else that if a spike claw jumps to them, they're not going to cleave you. So this, this, uh, all this damage you guys are taking is, is really bad. You don't, you don't have to take this damage. And it's not worth it. Um, like your healer dies here. So, and uses Ankh, which is like... A huge loss right so you yeah so the healer just died um, you've popped both your your uh, defensives fade and desperate prayer and I think you're in dispersion right now oh no you're not um, yeah so you're like this is like really really sketchy <laughs> right and could be easily avoided if you guys just loosely loosely stack right just, like I said far enough away to not cleave and then as far as your damage goes on this pull, um, it's it's really low, right? So uh, I kind of missed like your rotation, but I, I will mention it here. Um, I watched this earlier, so I, I don't have to like show you guys. Uh, I can just mention. Um, in this pull, first off, you don't use a single CD, a single damage cooldown, um, and the idea behind that, I think, is that the next pull is going to be pretty big, and so you want to use all your CDs on that next pull. Um, and I, I know that's the case, because that's what you do. Um, but pretty much all DPS classes are going to try and do that as well, right? So the Monk is probably going to pop CDs there. The, the Rogue, who it looks like popped CDs here, but maybe not, because they're doing 11k DPS. Um, the rogue could potentially pop CDs there. If you have a, a holy paladin, they're going to pop uh, Ash and Hollow there. So damage is going to be like really, really high from everybody. So it means that your damage, uh, your your CDs are going to lose some value. Um, so what I would do is on this pull, if we count, it's five targets, right? So you've got five spike claws which just so happens to be the target cap for your Mindbender, right? For your Legendary, I should say, from your Mindbender. So your Shadowflame Rifts that are are made every time you, you use a Mind Blast or Shadow or Death while Mindbender is out, will hit up to five targets. There's five targets right here. This is a great time. Um, you can save your Power Infusion and save your Void Eruption, but I would use your, your Mindbender here to... To do some good damage to this pack, right? Um, the other thing I'll mention is while you're you're fighting these guys, you cast a lot of uh, like you you put out a vampiric touch right here. There's no point. This vampiric touch is completely useless. This mob, uh, so for vampiric touch, you only ever want to use it if the mob is gonna live. For the the like go to advice is like if the mob lives for 12 seconds or more, but I don't know. I mean, that's fine, but uh, you, you, so putting out a vampiric touch increases your mastery damage to a target, right? So it's gonna mean that this guy dies quicker than these other guys 
at least from your damage. Um, it also gives you some passive uh, healing to yourself, because every time it deals damage, you're going to get healed for some of that. Um, and then the only other reason that you would want to put Vampiric Touch out is if you're going to be getting, uh, if you want the, the Ghost Sanity Gen. Um, so you're you're going to be wanting you're going to want to cast your your ghost generating abilities, so mind blast and firing plague and even void bolt. Um, but this is bolstering, so everything you want to kill everything at the same time. This target has the exact same amount of health as all the other targets, so it's not a priority, right? You don't need to do more damage to it to kill it at the same time as everything else. This vampiric touch is a wasted global, is what I'm trying to say. Instead of casting vampiric touch here. You should be mind searing and searing nightmare spamming. Um, that's pretty much that's almost all you want to do on this pack. However, if you had popped mind bender, then uh, you would want to be doing your mind sear and searing nightmare when you can, and then uh, casting your mind blasts and your shadow or deaths to get some uh, rift damage on these guys, right? But instead, you cast this vampiric touch, which does nothing. You cast a uh, you cast a shadow crash, which is good. You cast a, a shadow or death right there when you were really low. We watch. So right here, you're fifteen percent HP. You just cast a shadow or death. That's pretty sketchy, um, but that's something that I do all the time. And this mob is in execute range, so you're getting good damage out of that shadow or death. So that's fine. Um, and you end up not dying, which is good. And, okay, so yeah, you're in, you cast a Dark Thoughts proc here as you move, which is good. But then you stop and you hard cast the Mind Blast, which is bad. Um, if your Mind Bender was out, this Mind Blast would be good, because then you get a, a Rift that's going to do damage to all this stuff. But as of right now, this Mind Blast is only doing damage to this one target, which is less than if it did damage to all four, <laughs> right? Um, so don't cast this Mind Blast here. Cast a Searing Nightmare instead, a, sh a Mind Seer and then a Searing Nightmare. You've got enough insanity for it. Um, but you cast the Mind Blast, your Shadow crashes off cooldown, you use it, which is good. However, the, the mobs get pulled away so it doesn't hit. Oh, it looks like it did hit, actually, just on the edge of everything. Um, and then this the Spirit Link Totem comes down because your healer is like, uh, super scared because everybody's dying from those those cleaves. Um, and you go and stand in the, in the Spirit Link Totem, which is a, a good instinct to have. You should always stand in these. Um, okay, maybe not always, but pretty much always. Um, yeah, and then that's the end of the first pull. So uh, that, that pull could have gone a lot better. The, the very big takeaways, I would say, are use Mindbender there. Um, okay, so if you're not going to use Mindbender there then you need to be casting way more Searing Nightmares. And if you are going to use Mindbender there, then you need to focus on using as many Mind Blasts and Shadow Word Deaths as you can, and then filling in between those spells with Searing Nightmares. Um, that would bring your damage up from 4.4k to maybe closer to the Monk. Um, okay, and then the, the, the very last thing at the end of that pull, your Soul Letting Ruby is still off cooldown. Um, it looks like it's uh, macroed with your power fusion, which I, I just, uh, in this next poll, you'll be able to see they go off at the exact same time. If they are, then it's fine that you, you don't use it there. If they're not, and I don't think they should be, I think you should have them not macroed together. If they aren't, then you should be sniping things as they die with Soul Letting Ruby. Because you, you get more crit if you use it on a target with low health. And if you use it on something and then it dies, you get full crit. Uh, the full crit value from it. And because it's a 226 ruby, you're going to get like 1.1k critical strike. Which is a lot. And it'll put you at really high crit going into this next pull. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to soul letting ruby one of these really high health things. Which will give you like... 200, maybe 150 critical, critical strike, which is going to give you very little benefit. Even though you're going to have the buff for a bit longer, you're better off sniping something right here and then carrying it into the next pack. Um, 
can shadow mend yourself and other people between pulls. That's a good thing. Okay, then you pop all your CDs right here, and you you start blasting this pack. Um, you're insanity capped for a while, which is not ideal. And then you're getting out. You got out of vampiric touch on the the big boy, which is okay, I guess. Um, okay, so you're doing almost 13k DPS, which is fine. Um, but there are there were a couple big things that uh aren't so great. So let me go back a little bit. Um, so okay, so you have this pull is four targets as you can see, right? Um, and they're all none of them jump away or anything, so they're all going to be stacked here the whole time. Um, you're popping your mind bender. You got your Fey Guardians up. You got Chiron Fusion and your Solidic Ruby. All, all that stuff is running. Um, so when you have your mind bender out, uh, you should be. The priority is to get as many rifts as possible, and then the priority. Okay, so it's it's a little weird because you've got all your cooldowns running right here. So the main priority. Yeah, I, I would say that your your main priority in this pull specifically is get as many shadow flame rifts as possible, and then your second priority is to extend your void form for as long as possible, and then your third priority is to spam Searing Nightmare, get as many Searing Nightmares as possible. So we're gonna go a little slowly. So very first thing, you just entered void form, right? Uh, you're casting a Mind Blast. This is good, it's gonna put your one charge of Mind Blast on cooldown. I would suggest that instead of this Mind Blast, you do Void Bolt and then Mind Blast, but it's, it's fine. Um, so you mind blast and then you mind blast again. Uh, also, your yeah. So I won't mention that, but I was gonna say your uh, your mind bender isn't hitting everything because you're targeting this villager and it, it the villager this is the like really really min maxi part. Your vill the villager is facing this way, and whenever your shadow flame rifts go off, your mind bender will teleport behind the ad. So behind it would be over here, right? Which means it's that Shadow Flame Rift isn't going to hit anything on this side. So, at a really, really, really small min maxi level, you want to try to hit things whose backs are towards other mobs, right? That's That, that gets really difficult, so that's why I wasn't going to bring it up, but uh, that's a, a small thing that you could do to increase your damage. Um, instead of mind blasting this villager, I would mind blast either this Harvester guy or this other guy right here. Um, because if you har if you hit this one, it'll hit these two guys probably. If you hit this one, it'll hit these two guys probably. Um, so that's that's what I would suggest. But that's like a really really small thing. And you're focusing the villager anyway because it's got the most HP, so it's fine. Anyway, so you cast two mind blasts back to back, which is fine. But you're capped on insanity, so you you want to not be capped on insanity, right? And you cast your void bolt, um, and then. Your next cast is a Mind Seer into a Searing Nightmare. That's good. Um, and then following this, you should Shadow Crash to get it on cooldown. Which you do, which is good. And then your Void Bolt goes out, which is also good. And then you cast a Vampiric Touch. Why? There's no point in, in putting that Vampiric Touch out. Um, in 9.0.5, the current patch, our dots do pretty much no damage. So there's no point. It's the only reason. Okay, not the only reason, but uh, putting out this dot is just going to make it so that your all your damage done to this target is increased by your mastery one more time. So let's say you've got 10% mastery. Instead of doing every dot that you have on this target is going to increase your damage done to that target by your mastery. So if you have one dot, your shadow word pain, which you have on everything. You're doing 10% increased damage to everything. So when you put this Vampiric Touch on this guy, you're going to start doing 20% increased damage to this guy, and still 10% to these three guys, which is why uh, you want to put it on priority targets, right? So this Vampiric Touch on this guy, uh, this guy is kind of a priority target, although not really. Um, it all should die at the same time, because it's, it's bolstering, right? Um, anyway, so... 
I wouldn't. This vampiric touch is a waste of a global. Um, it's not going to do pretty much any damage to this guy, and you're way better off spending that global. You're insanity capped. You're way better off spending that global as a searing nightmare, which is going to hit everything, and it's going to hit everything for a lot of damage because you've got your your crit rolling right, and you already have shadowward pain on everything. So instead of using this vampiric touch, mind sear, searing nightmare, mind blast, void bolt, searing nightmare, searing nightmare. Basically, use more Sinner Nightmares here. Okay, so right there, you put a Devouring Plague out on this guy as well. Um, so you're you're really, you know, focusing this villager down, which is okay. But that that Devouring Plague is only going to do damage to this one guy. Um, and there's three other dudes who you need to do damage to. So instead of that Devouring Plague, I would say use Searing Nightmare. <laughs> um. And then you cast your Void Bolt, you get another, you almost get another Mind Blast off, but it, the mobs walk behind you, which is unfortunate. But you can fix that if we go back a little. As you're casting this Mind Blast, oh, okay, so let me go back just a little bit and watch. These guys start running towards you, and you start casting Mind Blast, and they just pass right through you. You just hold right click and turn your camera and follow these guys your Mind Blast will go off. But because you're not following them, right, with your, your camera, your Mind Blast starts casting on them because they're in front of you, but then by the time it finishes, they're behind you and it doesn't go off, right? So if we watch, start the Mind Blast cast right here, they go through you, it doesn't go off. And then you cast a, a, a Shadow Word Death. So yeah, uh, and then you were Mind Flaying right there for a second. You never want to Mind Flay in this situation. There are more than three targets, you always want to mine here instead. You're dodging the frontals and stuff, so that's good. But yeah, basically, you end up doing like 10k DPS on this pull. You could have done a lot more if instead of... Uh, you had a couple wasted globals that were pretty important. So, the Devouring Plague, and the uh, Vampiric Touch, and the Mind Flay. If you replace... Pretty much all of those with Searing Nightmares, you're going to do more damage. And you shouldn't be using your Mindbender on this pack anyway, because you used it on the pack before in, a, in an ideal situation. Which means you can just sit here and Searing Nightmare spam the whole time, and you're going to do way more damage. So in the future, at least give it a try. Um, Mindbender on the pack before, Searing Nightmare spam on this pack. You can pop your other cooldowns too. You can pop uh, Void Eruption, Power Infusion... Um, but when you do that, don't cast Mind Blast, because there's no point. You're just going to want to pop your Void Form so that you get full benefit of your mastery on every target. And then you're going to want to just start spamming Searing Nightmare. Leave your, your Mind Blasts capped. It's fine. Also, Shadow Crash when you can. Um, okay, and then we, we finish off this guy, and you guys start moving on. So, so far, decent. Um, but there are some big changes you could make. So right here, you mind soothe both these guys. That's the safer play. You don't need to actually mind soothe that guy though. And you mind soothe these two guys so that you can open the the garden or whatever um, to get the the stash rooms before the the pull, which is fine. Uh, nothing to say here. <laughs> you guys just grab all the the shrooms or whatever. Um, okay, then you're going into this pull. So in this pull, before we start. Um, it's good to take account of what you have available. Your Mindbender's off cooldown, uh, your Void Form is about to come off cooldown, and you've got almost 100 Insanity. So what I would do right here is while everything is spread like this, as the tank is starting to gather things up, I would cast Vampiric Touch on all of them, probably. So Vampiric Touch four times, and what you could even do is Vampiric Touch, another Vampiric Touch, but then you're going to be Insanity capped, so you you cast a, a Devouring Plague, but uh, it's probably not worth it. So I'd Vampiric Touch everything, and then they should be all close to each other at that point. So you pop your Mindbender, you pop Void Form, and then you just start spamming Searing Nightmare, and using your Mind Blasts and Shadow Word Death to get Void Form, or uh, Mindbender damage. So let's see what you do. So you get a Vampiric Touch on three, all four of them. That's good. That's what I would do. This guy needs to be kicked in. Tank pulls him over to him anyway. 
pop Mindbender, you pop Void Form, that's good. Shadow Crash right after the Void Form. Two Mind Blasts in a row, that's fine. You get your Void Bolt off too, which is good. Um, I will mention none of these targets have Shadow Work Paint on them yet. And this is something you could be kicking right here. Um, which you do, which is good. And then, uh, yeah, so this this at this point, you should be spamming Searing Nightmare. Um, you get knocked up, which is unfortunate. And I think you just cast the Devouring Plague right there, but it's hard to tell. Um, still, nothing has Shadow Word Pain on it. You haven't cast a single Searing Nightmare. And then this is your very first single Nightmare, or Searing Nightmare of the pole, when everything's about to die. Um, which is fine, but uh, Searing Nightmare is your best AoE damage. Um, in a, a situation where everything is stacked, so you should be you should be spamming Searing Nightmare here uh, instead of uh, the other stuff you were doing. So. Okay, so that's the end of that poll, basically. Oh yeah, you did have a Devouring Plague on this guy. Um, why? <laughs> that insanity is better spent on a Searing Nightmare. So at this point in the dungeon, you're doing 7.3k overall. That's good. Honestly, there's like... You could be doing more, right, if you had, you know, better CDs or whatever. But 7.3k overall, if that was your overall at the end of the dungeon, you'd be happy, I'm sure. So, so far, not bad. Okay, this poll is different from any of the other three polls we've had so far. The first poll was five targets, and then the next two were four targets. This is a two-target poll, right? So this is going to be a very, very different situation than those other three. So in those other three, you're trying to hit everything, do a lot of damage to everything. You're using Searing Nightmare whenever you can. You're uh, trying to get a lot of Shadow Flame Rifts on things, right? All that stuff. In this situation, where you've only got two things, you're going to be way closer to your default single target rotation than you would be in any of those other situations. So what you should do here is you should dot both these guys, and then you should be pretty much just single targeting one. And especially if you're doing the uh, the strat where you only have one of them hit 50% and then you have the other one hit 50%. Um, but if you're, it depends. And I think most people do that. So what you should do is focus this guy down. So dot them both, focus this guy, then focus this guy, and you'll you'll do good damage, right? Also going into this pull, your soul soul lighting ruby and your power infusion are about to come off cooldown. You've got about 15 seconds before your Mindbender comes off cooldown. Um, so it, it might be worth it to hold Power Fusion for your Mindbender, but um, at the same time, you want to make sure that if you do use Power Fusion here, you're going to need it up for this boss that you're about to go to. So you want to pop it early on this pack, probably. So popping it right on pole is probably fine, in my opinion. Um, but also saving it for your Mindbender is, is a little more risky, but more damage, probably. But it just means you might not do as much damage on this boss. So let's see what you do. So you Vampiric Touch, Shadow Word Pain, both, um, Cast the Devouring Plague, Mind Blast, Mind Flaying. Okay, so there's there's a question I have for you right there. So Mind Blast, Mind Flay. During this Mind Flay, you get a Dark Thoughts proc, and you don't use it, right? So you, you could be using it right there. Oh, you just cast Arcane Torrent too. I wonder why. The maybe it's bound to your uh maybe it's macroed together with your power infusion. Because you power infusion and Soul Letting Ruby and Arcane Torrent all at the same time. And they are all off. I'm not sure if Arcane Torrent No, Arcane Torrent isn't off the GCD. But the other two are, so I don't know why you would Arcane Torrent right here. Okay, so anyway, uh, you should use this Dark Thoughts proc while you're moving, or while you're channeling Mind Flay. Instead, um, okay, let me go back just a little bit. So you get this Dark Thoughts proc, you should use it immediately. You should be spamming your, your Mind Blast button so that it goes off immediately. But you don't, you move out of this, cast that Shadow Crash, and then you don't dodge this Tornado. You get knocked up by it, which is bad. You get a Devouring Plague off though, which is good. Because you're you're moving anyway, so that's a good cast. A mind blast comes out. So really, getting hit by that tornado cost you 
no damage, basically, because uh, you, you filled with your Devouring Plague on the way down. Your dots are about to fall off, so you need to re-up those. Just use your Mind Bender. Furious Thrashing is coming out. Uh, before this cast finishes, you should press Fade. But you press it after two ticks, which is fine, but you're taking more damage. This cast isn't going to last very long. In fact, you're... Uh, yeah, you could have this Translucent Image buff for pretty much that whole cast. You could have had two more ticks of reduced damage, but instead you, you don't. Also, your dots have fallen off of this guy, which is not good. You're dodging the Bramble Bursts, which is nice. Um, pop your Void Form here, too. Okay, this is this is decent so far. Um, mind Blasts are good while you have your Mind Bender out. You're using your uh, Void Bolts as soon as possible, which is good. Um, using your Void Eruption there is questionable, because now uh, your Void Eruption is close to... It's like a minute and a half until it's going to be up, and you're... Probably not a minute and a half away from the execute phase of this next boss. So using your power infusion and your mind bender at the beginning of that pull is good because it will probably be up in time for that. But this void form is questionable. We'll just have to see if it's up in time. So you don't have anything for this pride. Um, so you're just going to be doing your regular single target rotation. You pop Fey Guardians actually, which is interesting the CDR, I guess, and the damage reduction is nice. Maybe if you're going to use Fey Guardians here, save it for when the, the pride is ramped a little higher. Although your Fey Guardians is lasting a long time and you're getting pretty good uh, value out of it. Then your dots fall off, which is not good. Pop VE here. That's an underrated spell. So that's really good. Um, oh, your Void Forms almost off cooldown, so that's good. Your Void Form will be up for the next boss. Okay, yeah, so, so far, not bad. So this is good so far. All you want to do... Okay, that's the first mistake. All you want to do on this phase of this boss is... Put your dots up, and then use all your non-cooldown spells. Um, so do not pop Mindbender here. Because you want your Mindbender for when you are in the execute phase of this boss, so that you can get some really crazy damage going. Um, but the fact that your Mindbender is out means that you should be utilizing it by using your Shadow Word Deaths and your Mind Blasts, which so far it seems you have been. Your dots are falling off of this guy, which is bad. What you should do is run out of this pool, stop here, Vampiric Touch, and then as the next pool comes out that makes you need to move, you can press Shadow Word Pain as you run. So there's your Vampiric Touch, you run, your Shadow Word Pain has fallen off. Oh, your Vampiric Touching the other guy. Okay, yeah, there you go. Now you're fine. Yeah, try to keep in mind that you can you have instant cast spells, so you, anytime you have to move, you should be using uh, Shadow Word Pains or your Shadow Word Deaths or your Devouring Plagues, whatever's going to be doing the most damage at the time. You don't need to redot the tree there because it's about to fall off. It's about to become friendly. I mean, um, and then right here, you should try to snipe the tree with a Soul Letting Ruby before it becomes friendly, so that you can get more crit out of it. You should be standing close instead of being super far away so that you can that crit can get to you quicker because there's a travel time on Soul Letting Ruby. If you stand close to the tree, you're gonna get the crit from it pretty much immediately versus if we watch oh you didn't you didn't use it so we're not gonna see it, but uh oh and you pop power fusion here without hitting your ruby so they aren't macroed together. Interesting. So yeah, Ruby this guy, stand a little closer so that you can pop all your stuff. And then, uh, this is when you need to blast, right? So you're, you're popping all your stuff, which is good, but you don't have your mind bender for this, right? 
So all the damage you're gonna do. Oh, and you here's your uh, soul letting ruby coming to you. That. Um. Yeah. So this shadow crash right here. Uh, no good. Basically, not worth it in this single target situation. Um. Mind Blast, Devouring Plague, Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague, Void Bolt, Mind Flay to fill, Void Bolt, Mind Blast. Oh, okay, so uh, you get a Dissonant Echoes proc right here. So Mind Flay, Void Bolt. You're going to cast a Mind Blast here, and while you're casting the Mind Blast, your Void Bolt is going to come off cooldown because you get a proc. So it should be... Mind Blast, Void Bolt, and then whatever else you're going to do. Probably Mind Blast, Void Bolt of Iron Plague. Um, but instead, cast this Mind Blast. Your Void Bolt comes off cooldown. You cast a Devouring Plague. And then you cast a Mind Flay. This should be a Void Bolt. And this Void Bolt is important, right? You're in Lust and in an Execute phase. This Void Bolt is, like, very important, actually. And it's going to extend your Void Form. It's like, this Mind Flay does, like, no damage. <laughs> You should be casting Void Bolt. Okay, so then uh, the tree is back up. Boss is at like 50% HP, so you're not going to kill it in one phase, which means that you should be on the tree. You pop your Mindbender again. It's interesting that you're using your Mindbender for the tree instead of for the boss. Um, I guess it helps kill the tree faster, but that just means that there's less time for your cooldowns to come back up for the boss. I don't know. I would say don't use your Mindbender on the tree. Use it on the on Ingra, the boss. But you're still doing 9.2, 9.1k DPS, so it's it's alright. Um, you could spike really, really hard, though. I've had, like, 22k DPS or something, uh, if I can line up all my cooldowns properly for Ingra, for the execute phase. And I think you, you peaked around 11k. So you could be doing significantly more damage, um, which just means that this whole boss fight is going to go a lot quicker. And this is one of the points in the fight, or in the dungeon, where you can inflate your overall DPS really high, because uh, there's a, a increased damage phase, right? So, okay, so you're back on the boss. You should be your mind bender comes up, which is good. You pop uh, your rift generating spells. You should be casting devouring plague. There it is. Void bolt, mind blast, devouring plague, please. Thank you. Void Bolt, Devouring Plague, nope, you Mind Blast. Okay, so, right there, let's go back just a little bit. Okay, so when this buff falls off is when the big three times damage comes up. So right now, you should have your cooldowns running. So you've got your Mind Bender and your Void Form are both off cooldown, and this guy is at this moment, taking three times increased damage, but you're not going to be doing that damage to him because you need to press, you need to use a global to press your mind bender and you need to press your uh, void form. So this whole time, it's already down to four seconds, <laughs> right? It takes you like seven seconds if you watch. So right now, before the uh, before he's taking increased damage, press Mindbender, press Void Form. So that way you can be in your damage windows for the entire duration of the buff, right? Um, so if you watch, there's 11 seconds on this 3 times damage buff. This weak aura is really nice to see that, right? So how long before you get into Void Form, right? You should be in Void Form this entire 11 seconds. But instead, still not, still not, still not. Still not. Still not. Now you are. That's over half of the time you're not in Void Form. And Void Form is like your really big damage cooldown. So uh, you should have popped Void Form either right as this guy was about to transition or while he was casting that thing to get rid of the, the thing. Uh, this is really, really bad. You're losing a lot of damage here. Also, um, if we go back a little bit, your something that uh, you should keep in mind, your biggest single target nuke spell is Devouring Plague. It does a ton of damage. It just hits like a truck, right? So during this execute where he's taking increased damage, 
you want to cast as many devouring plagues on him as possible. Um, so like right here, instead of this mind blast, devouring plague, and then mind blast, especially because you're outside of void form. If you devouring plague here and then mind blast, you get an extra dot, which increases your mastery damage to this guy, right? Which means this mind blast and the sh the shadow flame rift that hit him are going to do more damage. Um, and your Devouring Plague is doing three times as much damage, <laughs> right? So, Devouring Plague here, then Mind Blast. But also, you should have been in Void Form already, so... A Devouring Plague here as well, before this Void Eruption. Devouring Plague right here, instead of this Mind Blast, would be good. There's your first Devouring Plague with only 2.4 seconds left on the buff, right? So, you're not even going to get full value out of this Devouring Plague on the buff. So that's that right there is the main reason your damage is so low on this boss fight in particular. So I'm gonna just let the rest of this boss fight play because there's other I'm sure there are other little things that I can mention. But this video is gonna end up being five hours long if I keep going at this pace. So I'm just gonna try and let a lot of stuff play. Um, I still want to mention like key things, but I don't want to just say every little thing, right? Um, so you're, you let your Shadow Word Pain fall off again, which is not good. You're dodging these frontals, which is good. You've also, as far as mechanics go, you've, you've handled them decently. By mechanics, I mean like, uh, oh, you get hit by that. Oh, that sucks. That's just unfortunate. By mechanics, I mean storming specifically, as well as, you know, the boss mechanics like uh, the frontals and the that fall on the ground. You're dodging all that stuff, or trying to dodge uh, at least most of it, which is good. You've gotten hit by several tornadoes, which is avoidable and unfortunate. Right here is a good example. You used your void form on the tree right before it phased. That's really good. So now you're going to be in void form for this whole uh, section of... The look at that! 24, 24k crit from one of those. Yeah, look at that damage. This damage is so much better. Yeah, okay. So that should be a pretty clear example. If you look at your your damage numbers right here on this last, watch the numbers that pop up above this guy's head. So, okay. 2k, 24k, 21k, right? How often do you see hits like that? Another 2k, 14k, 24k. 22k, 24k, 16, 14, 12k, 25k, 12k, 10k, yeah. Yeah, so if you could have that burn phase, but on all three burn phases, you'll be doing 12k over, or not 12k overall, but 12k damage on that boss fight instead of 7k. So the way you played that last little burn phase... It was way, way, way better than the way you played the, the first one, or the ones before it. Um, so try to try to do that. <laughs> okay, so then we go into the maze. Uh, first, uh, like one third of the dungeon is done. You're 7.4k overall, right? Um, not bad, honestly. Um, your damage is going to be going down, though because, uh, specifically because of the next boss, it's super hard to do high damage on the next boss. Like, I think I cap out at, like, 5.5k for that boss fight, just because of all the intermission phases where you lose, like, all sorts of damage. And unless you're, like, padding super hard, you can't really bring that number up super high. Um, so your overall is going to go down. So what I try to do is by the time I get to here, I want this number to be close to like 10k if I can. 10, or higher than 10 would be great, but around 10k. Because I know that through the end of the dungeon, it's going to go down just based on how the fights are, right? So because you're at 7.4k right here, it's it uh, is a hint that by the end of the dungeon, you're going to be maybe 6, maybe 5k, right? That's if you play everything uh, well, <laughs> right? Um, 
So you run over to the uh, the acorn thing to reset the graveyard. This is the safe play for sure. Um, you mentioned that this is like partially a pug group, so I definitely would do that. Um, although it it's technically a DPS loss, right? Because you're not doing any damage while you're you're hitting that. Uh, this is another two pack, right? Um, so like the big guys before the first boss, you want to be doing your single target rotation basically and dotting both of these. You're doing all right, it seems. Get a nice Shadow of Death off right there. I will mention though, um, this target has more health than that target. So you should Shadow of Death the other guy and then Shadow of Death this guy. But instead, this guy just dies and then you shut over death this guy, right? Oh, and you've got a, a nice, you've got your world markers keybound, it looks like. That's sweet. Okay, so this is a four pack, um, just like in the beginning of the dungeon, which means that you're going to want to pop Mindbender, Void Form, Searing Nightmare Spam. Also, you don't have any guys that jump out in this pack. So you're going to get a lot of value out of Searing Nightmare and your Mindbender Shadow Flame procs. Let's see what you do. Your Vampiric touching everything. Um, I would say don't do that. But then again, it's kind of up for debate. Uh, it's good to have Vampiric touch on stuff. You're going to do more damage to everything. Um, but then again, this is Tyrannical, not Fortified. So this stuff is going to die pretty quick. And if you Vampiric Touch everything, those are four globals where you could have been doing Searing Nightmare, right? Which would mean this stuff would be lower health than it is now because you'd be doing more damage. Eh. Let's just see how it ends up, how long these things last. It is good that you're using your, your Shadow Crash right as you get into Void Form. Okay, yeah. So see, all this stuff is dead already and you didn't... You didn't get a single Searing Nightmare out. Um, you did get some nice Shadow Flame Rift damage, which is good. But yeah, like you didn't have a single Shadow Word Pain on anything. Searing Nightmare is by far going to do more damage there. <laughs> so uh, instead of those four Vampiric Touches that you put out, I would have just Mindbender, Void Form, Shadow Crash, Searing Nightmare Spam, and then Mind Blast and Shadow Word Death to get rift damage so that's uh just playing those little packs like that a little bit better will bring up your your overall big time and then you guys have a really hard time with the maze which is unfortunate okay so on this poll you've got this uh stalker which is going to jump out what's this one six seven twelve Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to ignore this weird weak aura stuff that's going on, it looks like. Hmm. Hmm, that's hard to ignore. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so you put a bunch of vampiric touches out here. Again, don't do that. Not worth it. If this was high fortified, do it for sure. But in this case, these guys aren't going to live long enough, especially if you're doing uh, more damage, <laughs> right? So you could pop your Power Infusion here, you could pop your Soul Lighting Ruby, you could be spamming Searing Nightmare. You should be. So here you get a couple Searing Nightmares, which is good. Still Searing Nightmares, that's good. You get hit by that, okay. So the Stalker jumps on you and leaves this dot. You pop fade, which is perfect. That's exactly what I would do. You're taking less damage. Look, okay, so these searing nightmare spams right here, super good. Like, look at your damage. Shadow crash right here would be perfect, and then some shadow or death spam. Okay, so you didn't snipe. You you didn't snipe any of those things with your your shadow or death. 
you hit it on one of the targets at the very end. Also, what is this weak aura thing, dude? How can you play like that? Okay, it's gone. Is this showing a... Okay, so this is trying to show, like, the path that you should be taking through the maze, I guess. Void Eruption, Shadow Crash, Searing Nightmare Spam, please. Those Mind Blasts, there's no point. Uh, your Mind Bender is not out, so you're not getting Shadow Flame Rift damage from those Mind Blasts. All you're getting from those is Apparitions that are going to do damage to these guys and give you some insanity, but you're insanity capped anyway, so the insanity you get from those Apparitions is wasted, and the damage they do is small, because you're playing uh, Searing Nightmare and Shadow Crash and not Auspicious Spirits. So don't cast those two Mind Blasts there, bro. Instead, pop Void Form, and just leave the Mind Blasts and start spamming Searing Nightmare. See, if we look at the damage right here, you're at 5k barely. You could be at 10k, 11k, if you hit several Searing Nightmares right here. See, now you start Searing Nightmare spamming and watch your damage just go way up. You don't dodge one of those tornadoes, and then your Shadow Crash gets shot way back at the wall. <laughs> That's just unfortunate. Uh, the way you could avoid that is pulling your camera. If you hold right click and pull your mouse down like this, it'll point your camera straight down. And your, your targeting reticule isn't going to hit the wall like that with your Shadow Crash, and it'll go out into the where you actually want it, right? That's a small thing. But, I mean, you get a full Shadow Crash that instead gets wasted, right? Shadow Word Death Spam, please. Shadow Word Death that guy, and then Shadow Word Death this guy. Dark Thoughts while you're running away from that tornado is good. Okay, now you need to dodge these lines and start blasting this dude. So your Mind Bender is out, okay. Shadow Crash is fine. I don't love it, though. Shadow Word Pain, please. Okay. Oh, is your mind bender out or is it just off cooldown? Oh, it was out. Yeah. Okay. Pop Vampiric Embrace here, which is really good. You've got a good uh, sense of Vampiric Embrace. Using it at the end of those prides is super, super helpful. Okay, here's our first pure single target encounter. Um. Let's see how you handle this. So it should be Vampiric Touch, Shadow Word Pain. Mind Blast, Void Form. Nice. Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Iron Plague. Nope. Incorrect. <laughs> so very close. Um, you have this habit of using both Mind Blasts every time you enter Void Form. You should break that habit for sure. Because uh, like if you're ever doing a raid or uh, any kind of situation where it's just one boss like this, that's a, a really bad opener. You want to do um, Void Form, and then immediately Void Bolt, because you're playing Hungering Void, so you want to get as many Void Bolts as possible to extend your Void Form. So Void Form, Void Bolt, one Mind Blast, which will put you over 50 Insanity, so you can cast a Devouring Plague. Then you Devouring Plague, and then you cast another Void Bolt, because you get two GCDs between Void Bolts, so Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague. Void Bolt, and then another Mind Blast, and then another Devouring Plague. You just try to keep that three spell rotation for as long as you can. So you just go Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague. Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague. Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague. For as long as possible. And then, because you don't have Power Fusion and Mind Bender up is why you're doing this. Um, and then, yeah, as soon as you can't do that anymore, you fill with uh, Mind Flays to try and get Dissonant Echoes procs and Dark Thoughts procs, and then, you know, go from there. Instead, you got off those two Mind Blasts and then a Devouring Plague. Actually, let's see. Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Mind Blast. And what are you doing right here? You're targeting this other guy. Okay, then you're back on this guy, you Void Bolt. And then you Fey Guardians, which is fine, I guess. And then you Devouring Plague. 
The Void Bolt, Mind Blast, should be a Devouring Plague next. Nope, you Shadow Crash. The Void Bolt, Devouring Plague please, good. Dodge, good. Mind Blast, I mean uh, Mind Bender is fine. Mind Blast, Void Bolt, Devouring Plague. Mind Blast please, yes. Devouring Plague, Mind Flay, Devouring Plague. Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Void Mind Flay I mean. Devouring Plague, Shadow, Word Death. Oh, it's dead. Okay, yeah, so you played that pretty good actually. Aside from the uh, two Mind Blasts right into Void Form, that's fine. Okay, this is a five pack. So, Searing Nightmare spam like crazy. Especially because you don't have any of the other... Uh, um, is this a weak aura that's doing this? That's trying to give you the path? It's so crazy, dude. Or is it an add-on? Huh. Anyway, yeah, so... Um, all this stuff like insta died because the monk popped cooldowns, uh, which means that any vampiric touches that you had on this stuff are wasted. Basically, you're better off just spamming uh, mind blast. I mean, not mind blast, searing nightmare. Put out a devouring plague as these guys are dying. You should be shadow or deathing them to get insanity. Then you move on to the next path. That pack, not a whole lot you can do because it gets blasted, right? You're, I will mention, let's see. Okay, so at the end of the frog, your power infusion comes off cooldown. And then you don't use it on this pack. So you've been holding it for, let's see. When does it come up? The end of the frog, 1323 in the video, 1325 in the video. And then you don't use it, you don't use it, you don't use it, you don't use it. Still haven't used it. Still haven't used it. And then you Okay, so you don't... You hold it for over a minute. So uh, you should use that power infusion probably on this pack. I'd probably power infusion right here and start spamming Searing Nightmare. But instead you don't and you hold it. And then you get to this next pack... You're putting Vampiric Touches out again, which you don't need to do. You pop Mindbender, Void Eruption, Mind Blast, Mind Blast, again, don't do that. <laughs> mind Seer, Searing Nightmare Spam, that's good. You should Mind Blast here. Searing Nightmare Spam, don't Devouring Plague. That Shadow Word Death was really nice, though. That's another thing. Uh, you need to work on keeping your character facing the mobs. We'll go back a little. Right here, you're you're looking at these mobs, right? These mobs are all going to move this way, and you're not going to turn your camera at all. So right here, you should be holding right-click and moving your mouse to the right so that you look this way further. And you do finally turn, but... Uh, it's just because if you have the mobs like this and your camera's facing this way, then if this tank decides to step this way, right, any of your frontal targeting spells, like Mind Blast, anything that that has to have where you need to be facing a target to cast it, so Mind Blast, Void Bolt, um, you're not going to be able to cast them because they're going to break your, your line of sight, right? They're going to be behind you. So if you are turned to be facing these mobs, then the tank can go back this way as far as he wants. You can, you can still cast those things, right? That's something that you should work on, is keeping the mobs in front of you at all times. But it's not a huge thing. And then you guys get this really weird overlap where the prideful spawns while the pack is still alive. And then uh, this dude casts Bucking Rampage. You just stand in it and you get killed. So here's the Bucking Rampage, is this big red thing on your screen. I will mention at this point that your UI was great before, and now I don't like it. <laughs> so all the all the stuff that's... You've got a lot of really good stuff here, right? So like your party frames, everything I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Your party frames, your target frame, interrupts, chat, all that stuff. That's all good. 
whatever this thing is that's telling you the path to go through the maze, that is so bad. It's so visually cluttering, right? It just means that your eyes are going to ignore more of the stuff that's on the screen, right? You should only have stuff on the screen that you want to look at, right? So that's why this thing pops up, casting Bramblethorn Coat. That's why this thing pops up, Bucking Rampage. It's to alert you that, hey, this big circle on the ground that you're standing in is going to kill you as soon as this cast goes off. But because you have all this crap, this is boss has this line, has these weird numbers. Because you have all this, your eyes are more likely to ignore stuff around here. How this thing, this weak aura, or whatever it is that's telling you the path, stays up for so long. What's the point of this? Is it... I mean, I get that uh, you want to get through the maze as fast as possible, but also... Yeah, this is just not... This is just too visually cluttering for me. Plus this red thing... With all these characters? What's this? What's the point of this? Does this have to be here? No. <laughs> also, what's this? Have you used this at all? Not that I've seen. Sorry if I sound a little aggressive. It's just that this death right here, where you get hit by this bucking rampage, is 100% avoidable. You see the circle on the ground, right? Your big wigs or deadly boss mods or whatever pops up and says, bucking rampage. You're even targeting the guy who's casting it. There's a line right here that says it, right? And then you don't notice. And I think a lot of that is because of this big, ugly Mikar. <laughs> or whatever it is. So this, And you could also have noticed, but I don't know how much you're paying attention to the position of the mobs because you have this issue where they're not always in front of you. Maybe your eyes are down here or something. Um... You'll notice that all the mobs run this way except for this guy. That should be a warning to you. That, why isn't this guy moving? And then you think, oh, it's probably because he's casting. And then you look up, oh, he's casting Bucking Rampage. Oh, look, there's this big circle on the ground. I should move. Then you avoid this death. But instead, you get hit and you die. Right? Okay, so now... Uh, this is going to be really sketchy, because the Prideful is still alive. Oh, they B-res you. Wow. That's good. Okay, so right here, you got two things that are basically dead. Shadow or Death is off cooldown. Boom, boom. Hit them both. <laughs> what's your what's your thing, y'all? so funny. It's your boy, Daquan. That's sick. I like that. Okay, yeah, so aside from the death, um, yeah, that's, that's basically all I have to say about that, that pack. So uh, Right here, you, it's at 20 stacks, so you're taking max damage from it. This button would be really good right about now. Vampiric Embrace. Also, it looks like you don't have your Powered Fortitude, so you should press that as well. Um, and your... Fade, I think, is also ready to be used, so you should press that as well. Empiric Embrace, come on. If you don't do it, you're all going to bleed out. And then the Monk Touch of Deaths. So that's super lucky for you guys, for you guys, because it was looking really rough there for some reason. Okay, moving into this boss fight. You have... No cooldowns except for vamp or Void Eruption. Um, you have to decide. Should I Void Eruption here, or should I save it for after the first intermission? The answer is uh, not clear, probably. You've got Prideful. Prideful buff, which means that you're doing more damage, right? So if you do choose to pop Void Form here, it's stronger than if you didn't have Prideful, right? Which that's more of a better choice. Um, so let's see. Cast both dots. Oh, and you guys lust. So I would definitely avoid eruption here. You got lust and prideful. Mind blast, fake guardians, and void eruption. Yeah, perfect. Void bolt, 
Mind Blast, Devouring Plague. <gasps> you did it! Very good. So, this is the first time you've gone into Void Form and you haven't immediately cast two Mind Blasts. Good job. But this is correct. Another Void Bolt, another Mind Blast, Devouring Plague, Devouring Plague. Nope, you Shadow Crash. Void Bolt, your uh, Devouring Plague is about to fall off. Mind Blast, Devouring Plague. Void Bolt, Devouring Plague, Devouring Plague, Devouring Plague. Mind Blast. Okay, there's finally the, the Devouring Plague. So, uh, I guess that's one thing that I can mention. Um, when you're in this Void Form, your priority spells, like I've said before, are Void Bolt, Mind Blast, and Devouring Plague. You cast Mind Flay... Oh, I went way too far back. This Mind Flay right here should be a Devouring Plague instead. This, there's no point in this Mind Flay. I guess the idea is that you're trying to extend your Devouring Plagues uptime for as long as possible. But that actually doesn't matter at all while you're in Void Form. Because while you're in Void Form, you get full Mastery Benefit anyway. You only want to really start worrying about uptime on Devouring Plague when you're near the end of your Void Form and you're going to start having an Insanity Drought, right? Mind Blast, Void Bolt, Devouring Plague. Mindfully again when you could have Devouring Plagued. Another Mind Blast. You're going to get hit by these. Oh no, you're not. Nice. Mind Blast, Void Bolt, and then you hit the Guessing Game. You're still focusing the boss. And then you finally swap to the uh, little ad guy. Oh, and you popped your mind bender. Power infusion is ready. I don't know why you're not using it. Soul lighting ruby is also ready. You could use the ruby on any of those ads in the intermission phase as they're getting low health. Still have your power infusion ready. You could Psychic Scream that Fox away, or Psychic Horror it. Oh, you do Psychic Scream it, nice. Still have Power Infusion. You have a Dissonant Echoes proc. Pop Power Infusion here and Void Eruption. That's really bad timing. So the boss is at like 42% HP. It's about to go into the next intermission. Pop both cooldowns. So yeah, you're in the next intermission and you've still got 10 seconds on Power Infusion and like 11 seconds on Void Form. Yeah, that's really bad timing. If you're going to hold your Power Infusion like that for your Void Form, first off, you shouldn't. But second off, if you are, save it for after this. Also, you should be targeting this guy right now. Swap over, that's good. They dodge these dodgeballs, which is good. Should be devouring plaguing. Devouring plague. Good. Mind blast. Devouring plague. Here touch. Shadow pain. Devouring plague. Could cast another devouring plague right here as well. There you go. All right. So I guess, I guess your devouring plague usage is decent. You just cap on insanity a decent amount of times. Shadow Word Pain it f has fallen off. Use your Dark Thoughts while you're channeling. That's nice. Good. Shadow Word Pain's about to fall off again. Okay, you're focusing the, the skull, which is good. Devouring Plague if you wanted. Oh, but you're trying to get a Void Eruption off. This is an okay Void Eruption, I guess. Except not really. Because <laughs> you're... Eh, maybe it is. You get a decent amount of value. No Shadow Word Pain on that guy, and then the boss dies. Okay, so that was decent. Um... That guy goes running off to do the RP skip, which uh, 
is not as good as people think, I think. Oh, you levitate yourself. Fancy. You could also soul shape. That's one little thing. When you jump off of this, right here, if you soul shape right now, it'll instantly put you down at the bottom. You don't have to wait to fall. Soul shape, boom, you're right here and you click it and you soul shape, you flicker to get out here into the thing. But it's fine. Oh, and you guys are skipping. Okay. So this is going to be a really big pull right here. So you want... Okay, so this pull is going to be very key. Um, I will mention before you start the pull. Uh, what you're going to want to do is pop Mindbender solely for the insanity gen that you're going to get from its auto attacks. You're not going to worry about casting any Mind Blasts, and you're not going to cast any Shadow or Deaths. All you're going to do is press Mindbender, press Fey Guardians if you want to, um, but if you are going to press it, you should press it now as he's gathering stuff up. You should press Fey Guardians on like this guy or something. As of 9.0.5, Fey Guardians has like an infinite range, um, so you can like cast it on this guy even and it'll go out there. Um, in 9.1 they're going to change that, but uh, regardless, get your Fey Guardians out, and then as he starts getting stuff together, press Mindbender to start getting you some insanity. And then all you're going to do is you're going to press Power Infusion, you're going to press Searing Nightmare, and then you're going to you're just going to do this three button ro this two button rotation. So Searing uh, Mind Sear, Searing Nightmare, Searing Nightmare, Mind Sear, Searing Nightmare, Searing Nightmare, and then what you should do is, after the first Mind Seer and two Searing Nightmares, you're going to have all your Shadow Word Pains on everything. That's when you cast your Shadow Crash. It goes... So from this moment, it should be Fey Guardians on one of these things. Any of these things. Doesn't matter. Uh, preferably the Staghorn, actually, but it honestly doesn't matter. Fey Guardians. And then as they're getting together, you press Mindbender. And then you press uh, Mind Seer. Searing Nightmare, Searing Nightmare, Shadow Crash, and then literally Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare, Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare, Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare. And every time I said Searing Nightmare right there, it should be Mind Seer and two Searing Nightmares, and then Mind Seer again, two Searing Nightmares, and you'll do crazy, crazy damage. You can also pop your Soul Living Ruby, um, like on this guy, who's any of these guys. Um, Maybe if you can snipe a larva or something, but that's a little more intense. Let's see what you do. Okay, so this is just going to be a four pack, it looks like. So in this case, things change a little bit. Again, you're putting Vampiric Touch on everything. Um, which is probably better on this pack than in those previous packs, because nobody's going to pop CDs on this pack, probably, because they want to save it for this big crazy pack over here. So actually, this is probably a good time for you to pop some CDs. So I would press Mindbender right here. Maybe press Shadow Crash. Probably press Power Infusion and some Searing Nightmare Spam. There's some Searing Nightmare Spam. Good. And you did press Mindbender. Good. Mind Blast. Nice. Serious nightmare spam, come on. Dodge this thing. Vampiric touch? No. Okay, definitely not at this point. So, vampiric touching all that stuff when it's high health is questionable, but not the worst choice. Vampiric, vampiric touching this stuff when it's this low, definitely not the right choice. It's just a waste of globals for very little gain. Should be Shadow or Death sniping stuff right here. Star, for instance, you could kill it with one Shadow or Death. Oh. <laughs> so, because you skipped that mob before, you try to dodge this. Uh... So, this is a situational awareness thing. Right here, when this acid globule comes out, the ideal movement would be forward to this little edge as you skip this pack up here. But you can't see that pack 
And in most of your runs of this dungeon, I'm pretty sure, you don't skip that pack. So in your mind, there is no pack there. So you turn to run out of this, and you see this guy. And this guy's close enough that if you move out of this, he's going to aggro. And so you're like, oh crap. And so you stop, and you turn, and now you're panicked, right? You have to figure out where to go. By the time you do figure it out, you almost make it, but then you get knocked off and you die. Um, what you could do is you're like this, the acid globule comes out, you come out, you turn. As soon as you see that guy and you think, oh crap, I need to go somewhere else like this, press dispersion. Because the odds that you're going to get hit by this are higher, right? Because you have to change direction. Um, so if you press this version, there's a chance that you survive this, the damage from this at least, right? Also, you could uh, soul shape any direction that's away from this guy. So you see this guy, you turn your camera out to face this way, and you just boom, soul shape out of it. That would work. Um, but in a oh crap moment, dispersion is a good choice. So if you disperse this, you maybe survive that hit. You'll still get knocked off. But that's, I mean, that's a, a different problem. Um, but yeah, so I would, I would disperse. Plus, dispersion gives you more movement speed. So there's a chance that if you press dispersion there, you actually do make it out and you don't get knocked off. Um, a power word shield there as well would have been good. Power word shield now. Oh, and you do, you do end up hitting it at the very end before you die. Anyway, so then you get knocked off. You release, it's a good thing you clicked on the acorn, but now it's going to be awkward because how are you going to skip this guy? The rogue comes back and saps it, which is good. Oh, you use an invis pot anyway. I don't know if it's necessary, but whatever. And then they're gathering up this next pool. You have a larva focused or targeted. You put a vampiric touch on this larva. Okay, this is... Definitely not the right choice. Um, these larvae have like no HP. It's going to die super soon. Um, and that's one thing that I will mention about your UI. Uh, it's hard to tell what's an elite and what's not an elite. Um, for instance, in this pack, you got two gorgers and a staghorn. You should be focusing one of them and not focusing any of these larvae. Because these larvae are going to die to cleave really quick anyway and you're going to be casting stuff on this larva and then it's going to die and then you're going to have to change target and cast more stuff right in this pack i always pretty much just click on this stack horn and start hitting him right but instead you're hitting all this other stuff so now you're on the stack horn oh there's just the one gorger actually which makes it even uh more important to focus on them. yeah and then the monk pops off and kills everything instantly because monks are op um, so that, yeah, so you popped all your CDs right there, you're in void form currently, Power Fusion just fell off, Mindbender just fell off, um, let's go back, because this is actually a good moment to, so if we watch, uh, you'll see stuff, this is why it's partially good to have the, this one benefit of having the, the damage meters. As you can watch this monk just spike like crazy. As soon as you see this, you go, Oh, this stuff's all going to die instantly. I shouldn't pop all my cooldowns right now. Because, look, the monk is going crazy, right? And instead you still... And even then, all the larvae are dead before you cast your... Oh, that's a nice soul letting ruby, actually. Good job. Before you cast your void eruption... Every single larva is dead. You could cancel this cast even. You just need to realize, oh, this stuff is all dead. There's no point in my void eruption here. So to bring your damage up on this pole specifically, what I would say is don't do that vampiric touch. Don't cast that Fey Guardians. I would say press Power Fusion, Searing Nightmare, or Power Fusion, Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare. And just Searing Nightmare spam like crazy. Until you figure out how long stuff is going to live. Right? So let's see. You get Vampiric Touch, Fey Guardians, 
Mindbender. Yeah. Yeah. See, you lose so much damage. You didn't get a single Searing Nightmare off on this huge pack, right? So imagine Searing Nightmare does 1,000 damage, which is less than it actually does. If it did 1,000 damage to all of these mobs, you'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mobs. You'd have 8,000 damage from one cast, right? But instead, everything just dies. You get no Searing Nightmares. So that in that pack specifically, and in the upcoming packs, whenever there's a big uh, set of mobs like that, um, don't worry about uh, using your shout your legendary or getting any mind blasts off or anything. Just spam searing nightmare. Now you've got this two pull of the reavers. These are the guys I was talking about earlier who do the, the poison thing. Right here, you're spamming searing nightmare. So, this confuses me. So, you won't spam Searing Nightmare in a giant pack with a lot of mobs, but you will use it with two mobs. Yeah, this is incorrect for sure. What I would suggest is Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain one, and then Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain the other, and then single target rotation. So, Firing Plagues, Mind Blasts, Mind Flays, Dark Thoughts proc. See, you try to use your Dark Thoughts proc there, but you're not facing the mob. See, your camera's facing this way. You're trying to cast this Mind Blast on this guy over here, but because it's not in front of you, it's not going to go off until you turn your camera. Yeah. Dodging Tornadoes, which is fine. Yeah, so all in all, it seems like uh, it just comes down to like an understanding of uh, like situational awareness slash damage profiles. Um, so anytime you go into a pack, you need to understand, you have to have an idea of, is this pack going to live for a long time? Um, how many mobs are in this pack? which ones are elite, which ones are regular mobs. All of these things influence your decisions, right? Also, you shouldn't just uh, pop your cooldowns at the spots that everybody pops their cooldowns. Because everybody pops their cooldowns there, you should pop your cooldowns for a reason, right? You should be like, okay, we're going to have this huge pull. Stuff is going to live long enough for me to get good damage on it. So I'm going to pop my cooldowns, right? Um... That's like the biggest thing that I can think of that would help improve your damage overall. Um, it's just, so like this is a really good example. Right here, you want Mind Seer and Searing Nightmare like crazy. No Mind Blasts, do not cast that Mind Blast. So right here, you Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare, and then uh, you cast this Mind Blast. There are like 15 mobs here should not cast Mind Blasts when there are more than, like, even five mobs, probably, depending on some things, right? This Mind Blast is, like, the worst spell you could cast right here. And it's a waste of time. There's no point in doing it. Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare, Searing Nightmare, Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare, Searing Nightmare. Good. Dodge this, Mind Seer. No, not Mind Blast. <laughs> Shadow Crash should be good as well. Shadow Crash now, as you're running. Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare, Searing Nightmare. Use your Dark Thoughts proc, which you don't need to. Casting Vampiric Touches, which you don't need to. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, if you look at your damage for that pull, you're at the top, right? 15k. But you could have been a lot higher. You wasted several globals using Mind Blasts, Vampiric Touches, anything that doesn't do damage to more than one thing, you don't want to use when there's a big, big pull like that. Also, you're going to get hit by this tornado. Oh, no, yeah, you did. <laughs> um, in this pack, you cast your Vampiric Touches, Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare Spam, Shadow Crash as you move closer. Good. Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare Spam. 
Don't use this Dark Thoughts proc. What you do. Mind Seer, Searing Nightmare Spam. Mind Blast, this is fine as it's near the end. Shadow Word Death, please. Good. Okay, all in all, that, that pull wasn't too bad either. And then you guys are going to pull the boss. Okay, this is an interesting call. So a lot of pa a lot of groups will do this last prideful before they pull the boss, which would give you time to have power infusion up for this boss, right? But this group decides to do the boss and then finish trash, so you can skip the last prideful, which I think is actually the right choice if you're looking at it from a, a group perspective. You're going to do less damage on this boss because you don't have power fusion, but as a group, you'll probably finish with more time than if you had done the Prideful as well. Let's see. Vampiric Touch, Shadow Word Pain, Big Guardians, Mind Bender, Shadow Word Death, Mind Blast. You Shadow Crash there, don't. Void Eruption, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague, good. Void, or Void Bolt, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague, good. Void Bolt, Devouring Plague, or Mind Blast works. Shadow Word Death, Shadow Word Death, Shadow Word Death, Shadow Word Death, please. Please use Shadow Word Death. Still not using it. And now you don't want to use it at this point. Okay, so the reason I was saying Shadow Word Death there like a hundred times is because your Mind Bender was still out. If you Shadow Word Death while you're running, ar running around or whatever, you're going to get a Shadow Flame Rift, which is going to do more damage. Okay, and then here, your Vampiric touching these these larvae, no point. They're not going to live long enough. These are wasted globals. You're better off even just focusing the boss right now. Don't do any damage to the larvas. And then what you can do is when they get close, you Searing Nightmare them a couple times. But definitely don't put Vampiric Touch on them, because they're not going to live long enough. So you get a couple Searing Nightmares, that's good. A Shadow Crash would be great on that. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah. So you're doing alright here. You can Shadow Word Death that larva. Which I think you did. Yeah, you did. That's good. Mind Link comes out. The ads are coming out. Your Shadow Word Pain falls off. Vampiric Touch falls off the boss. Your Vampiric Touching all the larvas again. Which is a huge waste of time. You should pop Power Infusion with this Mind Bender that you're doing here. And your Soul Letting Ruby would be good. But instead it looks like you're saving your Power Infusion for the Void Form. Okay, so now is when you get into your, your Void Form. That took longer than it should have. A couple Searing Nightmares here would be good. Your healer dies again. Void Bolt. Shadow Crash is not the best, especially because it only hit the boss. Somebody needs to kick that. Nobody kicks it. And you get the Parasite on you. I'll go back and mention this cast. Every single kick is up. Granted, the healer is dead, so this kick doesn't count. There are four kicks that could be used right here, and uh, I will mention the monk and the rogue are way off in nowhere land fighting those larvae over there. Maybe the rogue is trying to be res the healer, but I don't know why the monk is over there. So neither of them can kick, because they have melee range kicks, but the tank could kick, and you could kick, which is the most important thing. This parasite, especially, he's facing you, so you know it's on you, right? You should kick this. No point not kicking it. And it goes out. And the parasite goes on you. Then you end up dying. <laughs> so this death is completely avoidable. You just uh, take the boss. Then you just have to sit here and shame <laughs> and watch the, uh, the rest of the boss fight. Oh, you get this B res. Interesting. Good, avoiding the acid expulsion pools. 
Shadow Crash out into those larvae would be good. Nice. You don't have Power Word Fortitude up, so you should cast that. Power Word Fortitude, whenever you can. Could be now, or now, or now, or now, or now, or now. <laughs> Make sure your Shadow Word Pain doesn't fall off. It does. I would have delayed that Void Form until after I re-upped Shadow Word Pain. Gotta dodge all this stuff. Whoa, that was a nice Soul Shape. Saved your life. Okay, Mind Blast. Shadow Word Death here. With Execute Damage. Um, one thing I'll mention as we wrap this video up is uh, um, when that you need to have a, a method for how you handle that this acid expulsion because if you just run in a random direction every single time it comes out, it makes it so that future ones are harder to predict. So what I like to do is for the very first time it comes out, I run to the right and I stop right outside of the circle. And then the next time it comes out, I run to the left. And I stop just outside the circle. Now obviously there are a few caveats, like if somebody's standing on your left, you can't run onto them, because they're going to have a circle there. You maybe have to run forward left or back left or whatever. But you, you should try and set up a method, so you're like, okay, the first one comes out, boom, I'm on the right. And then the next time it comes out, you know you can't stand here, and you can't stand to the right, so you move to the left. Then the next time it comes out, you know you can't stand here, you can't stand here, and you can't stand here. So you move forward or back. And then that way, instead of having these circles in a circle around you and they go flying like crazy and it's everywhere, you know that uh, this is number five or whatever, I'm going to move to the back left. And I'm going to move a little further because my, my back left one's already there. So that would, be, that would be a little helpful thing that makes that mechanic super trivial. Your Shadow Word Pain fell off again. There you go, you re-upped it. You're standing in this pool, which is bad. Took two ticks. Get a Searing Nightmare off, that's good. Your Power Infusion just came off cooldown, so you should be using it. Good. And then the boss ends up dying. Also, the tank is dead at the end there, that's crazy. And then you res the tank, that's good. Especially with power infusion, your res is probably faster than the healers. Tank is flaming you guys in chat a little bit, which is less than ideal. Void form here, searing nightmare spam, searing nightmare spam, searing nightmare spam. Good, searing nightmare, searing nightmare. No mind blast, no point. Searing nightmare, please. No mind blast, don't do that. Searing nightmare. Okay, now you can mind blast, but it's over anyway. So, <laughs> okay, so that's the uh, that's the whole dungeon. So the the key takeaways, I think, um, you need to prioritize different spells. You need to understand holes a little bit differently. Um, don't worry about putting vampiric touches on uh, holes where stuff isn't going to live very long or um, or uh, there's a lot of things, right? Um, and you you need to value your Searing Nightmare more than you do currently. Searing Nightmare does a lot of damage, and it hits everything, right? So because of that, it's gonna it does a lot of damage, right? So you need to uh, cast way more Searing Nightmares, worry way less about casting Vampiric Touch, um, and then. Uh, don't hold your power infusions for as long as you did uh, occasionally. Try to use, I know you mentioned this, but try to use your uh, cooldowns as frequently as possible with, you know, a little bit of uh, like decision making. Like don't pop your cooldowns right when everything dies kind of thing. And then the other thing I would, I would try to work on is uh, your single target rotation. Making sure that you get the absolute most out of your single target that you can. 
Um, because like that boss fight that just happened is pretty much all single target, and you ended up at 6k. Um, you lost to the rogue and the monk. Granted, the monk was padding like crazy on the ads, so you kind of ignore that. But oh, and maybe this is actually dungeon overall. Regardless, um, yeah. So those those are the big takeaways. Uh, hopefully, this video was helpful. I hope that I don't come off as like too aggressive or confrontational or whatever. I don't think you're a bad player, and obviously you're not a bad player. You timed to 19, right? Um, it's just that there are some big improvements that you could make. Uh, but I mean, that's the point of the video, right? <laughs> right. So hopefully this helped. Um, to everyone who's not Paul, hopefully uh, this video was not way too long and long-winded. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Uh, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, do all that, whatever. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.